and welcome to the Everyday Board Game Podcast with your hosts, Daniel. And Daniel. All right. Seems like everything's going All right. Good. That was a bit of a delay. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping for the best. So this is going to be a fun episode. We just had to fight with our internet connection, <laughs> as always. It's just, I think Zoom doesn't like Twitch. I think that's just what I'm, I'm assuming now at this point. I'm, I'm not sure. There, there's there been some issues, but hopefully soon we'll be able to do this live um, when mm-hmm. I get to the new place. So we'll see how that goes. Exactly. exactly. So fingers crossed. We're hoping for the best. Anyway, Daniel, it's good to be back. Yeah, I know. Two weeks in a row with you and me. It's been a while since we've yeah. done that. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm enjoying every minute of it. It's so rare that I get to do this. I've had a crazy schedule lately, but, you know, it is what it is. We want to thank Bryce for always helping us out whenever he can. He, he's a tremendous help. It's huge. Mm-hmm. We appreciate you. And, uh, Bryce, keep coming on. You're a and great also, host. our topic, we stole blatantly from him in his TikTok. Gamehead Geek at TikTok. Give him a follow. I, I felt like we had to at least give him some, you know, some benefit to this. Because, yeah, we straight up stole this idea. <laughs> Oh, goodness. No, this this is one that's a commonly debated thing, and it's a commonly discussed topic amongst a lot of games. Um, it, it's what is the best and worst board game covers? Yeah, no, and uh, for people to know, again, uh, Gamehead Geek, Bryce, over on TikTok, he has a cover versus cover challenge going on right now to find out what his audience believes is the best cover. And I'm like... Well, I want to talk about our covers and our likes and stuff like that. So I broached you with the subject, and you're like, yeah, let's rip it off. Yeah, but at the same time, we also like to really kind of spin the knife, if you will, twist it. Yeah. Because that's why we want the worst covers also. (laughs) Yeah, so it it should be interesting. It, It should be fun because I want to tell everybody what I like and what I dislike about covers. Yep, yep, me too. And so I had some restrictions with this. I understand you did as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first restriction I think we both went by is we wanted newer covers. Yeah, I think the oldest game on my list is like mid-2000s. Yeah. And and I didn't pick anything that was supposed to be bad, like intentionally bad. I stuck specifically to, you know, bad in a modern sense, you know. And what I mean by that is like, they're, they're new. Nowadays, we have so many great covers, so many amazing artists and board games. You kind of don't have an excuse to make a bad cover. Kind That's of. true. I mean, when you got Chris Quilliam, Vincent Dutre, Andrew uh, Bosley, all these really great artists out there, and then you come up with covers like that. I mean, case in point, it's not on my list, but if you, I'll just tip my camera up just slightly. Those mm-hmm. aren't bad covers by Queen Games. But they're also not that great. Yeah. Yeah. They are what they are. Exactly. And and I have my Alea games clearly behind me, you know, which may or may oh. not make reference in this list. We'll talk about uh, that. They're, they're, the, those are some of the better Feld games behind me up there. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah that's, that's not saying much. Right. Exactly. And there's so many companies that make, like, really phenomenal board game covers for Feld games even. Like, I'm going to give a quick shout out to like Bonfire. Bonfire is an amazing oh, cover. That's a great list, cover, yeah. But it's super pretty, right? Mm-hmm. So, we have a lot that we can discuss. But before we do, and before we get to our honorable mentions, uh, oh, yeah. The other restriction I had for myself is I had, I have to own these games. Like, because it's very easy to find just really garbage covers from like board games that you would never have for any reason, you know. Yeah, it, it makes sense. I want to at least be saying something positive about the games themselves. So if I own them, I know I already like them. Yeah, I didn't go with that restriction. Uh, mind you, I've played every single game except for one on this list, and I'll get to that when I get to it. But everything else I've played on this list, and the box cover, and the gameplay is great. It's just it's there's a bit of an issue, and we'll get to it when I start talking about my worst side. But most of them I've played at least several times good deal all right so before we get into our fan uh nominees or what our fan discussion let's talk about what we've been playing lately daniel what are you playing 
Oh, I've actually got some games played over the last two weeks. Um, I'm just going to mention a couple small ones that I, I, I've played just because I played like about six or seven games this past two weeks since we last recorded. Um, I did play another game of Silver and Gold as well as another game of Archaeology. I two of the best Phil Walker Harding games out there, stuff that we go and play. But the game, the first game I'm actually going to talk about is I finally played Wayfinders. I actually met with our mutual friend Bryce, really? and we played some games on Friday afternoon while he was off and the wife was at work. So we got together and played some games. Honestly, it's not a bad game. I really dug it. And speaking of box covers, that's a pretty box cover from Pandasaurus for Wayfinders. It's really nice looking. And I I really enjoyed it. It's got an interesting mechanism to it where first you put your workers out to gain your resources. Then you can move your ship around the board and you're trying to claim all these for you can get your points or make things get – because you got to – when you're moving your plane, you got to either pay the resource to go to that area. So if it's purple, you got to pay a purple resource. If it's uh, red, you got to pay a red resource and so forth. And then if you want to put a hanger on it, you got to claim it. And so you got to pay the resources for that, and then you get a certain reward for it. Either it's like random resources out of a bag, or now purple locations are free for you to move through instead of having to pay for them and stuff like that. I actually really enjoyed it. It's a pretty good game. Cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing my copy finally. <laughs> I have it sitting right over there. And, that, and it actually, when I was looking through my, my games of like best covers and whatnot, that actually popped out to me. And I was like, hmm... But I didn't want to put any ones that I haven't played yet, just in case I didn't like it. Yeah, but no, it did. But it's, it's, it was definitely it's a good game. running. It's a really good game. Ooh. I like it. Awesome. Yeah, I so I have a whole bunch of new games that I wanted to bring up. All of these were on my shelf of shame, and I've got them all off, and I'm so excited about it. The first one I want to talk about is Parks. Have you seen Parks? <sighs> Yes, Speaking I'm just trying to remember covers. which one is it because there's there's Parks and then there's that other one, uh, Trekking the USA. I get those mixed up. Is Parks the one with like the the abstract looking bear cover? Uh, no. Okay. No. In fact, I don't think at all. Um, no, it, it's one of the the Parks like actual photographs, the 59 states or whatever they they were called. Got it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, or just like waterfall of like one of the national parks. No, this is kind of like a uh, a one way rondell worker placement game. So the way it works is that you have a series of different uh, spots that give you different resources. If you're the first player to play, you move. You can move your hiker as far along the trail as you want, but you can never go back, and you can never occupy a spot by another hiker. And so when you get to the end of the trail, though, then you got to do stuff like take parks, trade in the resources to get the parks for points, or do a whole bunch of other things, like get uh, gear to upgrade, you get fulfill like bonuses, you know, become first player, all sorts of fun, nifty things. Uh, it's really a brilliant game. I was super impressed by it, because at first you're thinking it's going to be super crowded. If there's four people playing, which we had, that's eight pawns that are coming out, or eight hikers that are coming out throughout these like probably only seven or eight spots at a time so you're thinking it's like man there's probably not going to be much room for anything no there, there's quite a bit as people are shifting in and around and you have a campfire token which you flip face down put out your campfire and then that lets you break the rule you can then go into a spot that somebody else has occupied including your own normally you couldn't do that That's and then cool. i just love the way it works you have yeah, you have gear that you buy with sunshine tokens, which are the second most common thing. And then the most common is water, which you have canteens, which are little abilities that you activate by adding water to it when you get a water token. It's so smart. It's such a cool game. I highly, highly suggest it. It's probably in my top 100 already. It, I, just after that one play, I was super impressed by it. And I want to show you it. I think you would dig the mess out of it. Ah, it sounds pretty cool. I, I, I do want to try that out. It look, it, you got me intrigued, let me tell you. All right, so the second game on my list here is I played Fallout the board game with Bryce as well. I actually got the expansion where it turned it into a co-op game. 
and I wanted to try it out. So we actually, we didn't get to play all the way through because I had to go pick up the wife from work. And I have to say, I really like this game as a co-op. You pick a side, who's going to be the bad, who's going to be the good, which one you're going to be loyal to. You have an objective that you have to complete for the story, as well as like mini goals per player. So you have like four goal cards out there, depending on how many players there are. You also got to meet those goal cards. So for us, we had to meet the big objective plus two goal cards to win the game. And we met the big objective. We just didn't get any of the gold cards out because I had to leave. But we were working on it. We played for about an hour or so. It is going to be one of those longer games. Um, If you played any Fantasy Flight game with dice combat, you know how it can be lucky. But I have to say, I see why people have issues with this game. But I really, really enjoyed it. If you're a Fallout fan, you're getting that thematic sense out of it. Especially when it comes to those dice. Because it's the VAT system. So, hey, I got to hit some arms to kill them or, or some headshots or body shots and stuff like that. I do like that concept and the way that works. I think it's phenomenal. And honestly, as a co-op, it's it's really fun, surprisingly. Really, really fun. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I'm not a Fallout fan, and I really like that game. I, will, I should I will show you the co-op. play it next time. Next time in. I'm in. All right, sounds good. So moving on to your next game. Speaking of big, grandiose games, my next game that I played is one that is brand new. Uh, I think it just came out maybe a month ago, probably, maybe two months. Hmm. And it uses a comic book to tell you the story. It's scenario driven. It's the one I told you about, the Corey Kaneska one. The Initiative. It is, yeah. I have bought it, and I have played the first round. And I'm not a fan of comics, and this is really intriguing because it's a really simple uh, code cracking game where basically you're trying to solve this code. Although here, here's the problem: a mutual friend of ours, Jim, you know Jim. I'm afraid we're going to have to take the decoder away from him because he looked at the words, just the the symbols, and he looked at it and he goes, "Okay, yeah, I know it." And we hadn't started the game yet. It's like, dude, I know you know it, but don't, but don't do this. And so, really, he's going to have to take a back seat while us other three actually play and solve the game. And I mean, it, it's not too difficult. It, it has some cool things up its sleeve. But what makes it really neat is it's like an action selection game, but at the same time, you have to play cards that are a higher number than the previous played cards. So if there's a three on run, which is how you move around the board, you have to play a four or higher. And there's ways to discard those cards, but that card, the action to actually discard them, those you can never reset. So you have to kind of time it. And then once once the card deck is ran out, which is only like 36 cards, I think, total, and uh, so it's pretty quick, once it runs out, you have to reshuffle it. And you can only use what's in the discard. So if you've been playing really efficiently and not discarding anything off the table, well, then you're only shuffling, like, timer cards, and that's it. That's your endgame trigger. Oof. It's neat, though. It's all about puzzle solving, code cracking. It's just my style. It's super fun. Um, There's something a little quirky about it that I've noticed, and and I've pointed out to our friend Jim, but I don't think anybody else has noticed it, and I imagine it's going to come into play later on in the game. But I'll let you figure that out. If you end up getting it, It's I've already enjoyed it really quite a bit from the first play alone. Oh, I'm going to end up getting it. I just haven't yet because I've been... I'm really good on games right now. I just bought a ton of them that I have to play, and that's another one that's on my list, but I'll wait. I also got more stuff to make our podcast a little better and a better webcam and mic coming in soon. So I'm like, I'm going to pump the brakes on getting some games. I just got a bunch in. I just got most recently the Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig uh, oh. from Stonemeyer Games. That game plus the expansion because the there was like a pre-order for it, and I think I spent like forty five dollars, forty five to fifty dollars for the whole for everything. That'll do it. Yeah, that's so I was lot. like, <laughs> so not too bad. But 
but the next game yeah. on my list is one I've talked about a lot, so I'm not going to go too far into it. You can kind of see it right over my shoulder there, the expansion to it, sitting on my wall. Got some more Gloomhaven in with the wife. Ten games so far of the base game, so I've matched where we originally were in game-wise from the first playthrough of it. And mm -hmm. I'm having a great time digging deeper, digging deeper into this campaign with the wife. It's just been phenomenal. We've had a really – the last one did lend us to uh, – there was one time we were playing against the big boss, and it seemed like, oh, wow, this was a bit too easy or a boss fight. And so we're like, okay, let's up the ante a little bit. We go into the next one and barely walked out of it alive. <laughs> barely <laughs> walked out of it. So – there's new things that have opened up. I'm really enjoying this run of it, and I want to see how far deep we delve into this before she's finally like, eh, let's play something else. <laughs> so I'm enjoying it. Gloomhaven. Cool deal. Uh, the next one is one that has been on my radar for a number of years, and I finally found a copy for sale last weekend when I went over to, to visit my brother over in Tucson. I found a copy for sale, and I said, okay, yep, I need it. I've had it for years. I've wanted it in my collection. And then we played it that going back to old school tabletop nowadays. Do you remember Unspeakable Words, Daniel? Yes, I remember that one because it's like uh, you start slowly going mad with that game. Mm-hmm. Yep. You have five little Cthulhu's in front of you. You're making words, and then you have to roll a sanity check. If you fail the check... You lose one of your Cthulhu's. If you lose all five, you're out of the game. But if you're down to just one, you can make up whatever words you want. And you're not restricted by the normal rules of they, you no know, pronouns, no abbreviations. But you do have to pronounce it. And you do have to tell everybody else what it means. <laughs> you be completely made up. So you're slowly going crazy. It's super silly. I am awful at it. Um, you know, it. You know, I, I lost. So I don't think I've... No, I, I've made it near the end once out of the three times I've played it so far. And two other times I completely got eliminated. <laughs> like, once I got eliminated before pe other everybody else got like 30 points. It was ridiculous. You have to get up to 100 first. <laughs> it's, it's so brutal. It's such a brutal game. But I just need to stop going for like 20-point word. That's crazy. So I guess that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. words. super fun so my last game here is one that we talk about a lot on this podcast it's won several of our top eight debates and one i've been wanting to show my wife as well as our mutual or my friends angel and maria i've mentioned them before i finally got them to play it yesterday actually and it went over like gangbusters and that's simply john declares masterpiece space base Mm -hmm. uh, again, like I said, finally was able to show it to them. Uh, first time play for my wife, Angel, Maria, and they simply loved it. Once once it got going and they figured out how things were going, they were like, oh, yeah, this is fun. This is great. Okay, I get it. Oh, and they were. And what's really good about this game is you're engaged throughout the entire game. Once, once you start putting cards into your tableau, this way they flip, you're paying attention to how people are rolling. Hey, they're they're throwing a two and a three over there. Well, guess what? I get money off of that now. Uh, oh wait, they threw a five. Um, I'm gonna get my victory points off this card then, and it's been fun. It's a great time. It's still a little finicky when it comes to like trying to remember how the charges work exactly, but still one of the best games I own in my um, collection, and. It's got a great box cover. The rest of the art is nah, okay at best, but Space Base, that's one of my favorite games and finally got it played. Very cool. And my last one that I'll talk about then, I have plenty more that I could talk about, but I'll cut it short just because, yeah, let's stick at four. It's a game called Rule the Realm, which does not look like it would normally be a good game. It has a pretty cover. It's super pretty looking. But it's, it's originally a Russian game or Ukrainian game. I forget which one. But it was originally called Kachok. And I guess that's Bless the sound you. of rubber bands snapping. Yeah. Kazuna <laughs> Uh It's the sound of rubber bands snapping. And that's because this is an area control game with rubber bands. 
it sounds ridiculous. They sell it in the kids section at, at Barnes and Noble. It's called Rule the Realm, and it and it's by Pressman, which is not the most the first company that comes to mind when you think of like gamer games. Yeah, but this game is so neat. It's so cool how it works, and it's real simple. You have like this giant like pegboard hexagon thing, and you you put a map over it, and depending on, the map changes depending on which of the eight scenarios you're playing, and how many players it plays. So there's 12 maps that the, there's, I think like 12 total, they're double-sided or something like that. And you place down the one that you're mainly working on and you're, you each place down rubber bands going from like one side to the other or making certain shapes that you score points for. On the board, there's a bunch of symbols. It's either mana symbols, which are these blue crystals or they're coins, which are victory points. In the game, it went super quick. You're just trying to get 18 victory points first. That's all it takes to, to play. And so you're stretching these rubber bands either across two, across three to make a triangle, or across four to make a uh, parallelogram. Everything that's inside of your rubber band, you get, and you add it to what, what supplies you have, and that's all you're doing, is you're just putting down two things, or you're getting cards that let you put those. Because around each peg, there's a color and a shape, so it'll be either like the green diamond or the red circle or the blue sun or the yellow sun or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're you're matching these cards all a ticket to ride style. You either draw two cards or play cards to lay out your rubber band. It's so neat. One thing I really like about it though is that when you're putting a rubber band on an opponent's peg that they already have, if you already have uh, your rubber band on a peg, you no longer have to pay that card. So I could extend from one of my spots using fewer cards because I've already <laughs> owned most of it. So I could put like a triangle with only one card if I already have the other two pegs. But it's more difficult for your opponents. If Daniel, if you already have a peg and I'm like, oh man, I really need to get there. I still have to pay the card and it goes to you and it goes in your hand oh, because man. you already own it. It's so neat. It's so simple. It's like, why didn't anybody think of that before? But it's, it's so good. Kachuk or rule the realm. Phenomenal That's game. interesting. Uh, I, I have to see it before I actually start playing it, but you know, it looks, it, it sounds interesting. That's it's about bizarre. as good as I can say about it. Yeah, it's bizarre looking. It really is. Cool. Yeah, I would think so if you're using rubber bands. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's a component that's not normally seen. And they're like the little hair rubber bands that, like, or like the, bands you put on like braces and stuff you know uh, okay. like the, the the more plasticky kind you know um but yeah no it, it's such a neat game i'm surprised i hadn't heard of it before and i'm surprised i hadn't been done before it seemed too obvious but either way uh let's go into our list now what are yeah, the let's best do this. and worst box covers how Sounds many good before, to me have you looked at the at the fan votes yet uh, so I've looked at it somewhat. Um, I haven't looked too, too much in it, though. Some people have put, like, uh, pictures of it. And there's one that, you know, terrifies me when I see it. Okay. We'll look at that. I haven't looked through them yet. But I almost wonder, I bet zero of mine are going to be on the list. I actually can look at some here. And, yeah, mine are not... Anything yet from what from the few that I can see are on my list yet. Uh, some made my honorable mentions, but we'll talk about those in a little bit. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Do you want us to take it off? All right. Starting with Scott here, he says the worst is probably Great Western Shrill, which I'm assuming he's talking about the Constipated Cowboys, not the new one that's coming out. Yeah. And he loves the Wasteland Express Delivery Service and Excavation Earth. Yeah. Great Western Trail, you know... I mean, just because they look dead in their eyes doesn't mean that it's bad. <laughs> they just look like they're wax figures, and they're a drawing of the wax figures. Like, I don't have a better way to describe it. I don't think it's terrible, though. Uh, it's not great. Uh, it actually made my short list, and it's one of my honorable mentions, so. Really? Okay. Okay, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Uh, Patrick said, I'll go favorite and worst. Favorite is Scythe. Ugliest is Chameleon. Which I like the way Chameleon looks, 
but I get why he says it because it's not super effective with uh, colorblind folk. Yeah, I, I can see the chameleon. It's like, mm. So Aaron posted one of those pictures, and this is the picture I was telling you about that creeps me out. I'm not exactly sure what game this is. Uh, I think it says Evil, the Supernatural game. I'm going to go look at some replies yeah. here. Uh, doesn't actually say what the game is, but man, that is a creepy picture. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's something like that. Something evil, the supernatural game. Uh, if I had to guess, I think this is from the. There was a company like Flying Frog Game or something that always had like live actors as their cover photographer or like photographs and stuff. Yeah. I, I do really appreciate Jason's reply to that. And he just simply said, Well, what's the worst then? <laughs> <laughs> Love that reply. Brilliant. All right. Dan, represent. He said, this war of mine has a really good cover art that shows you right away what you're getting into. Yeah, no, I've seen the cover on that one. It, it is really nice, but the I have a hard time with it play, trying to play a game like that. I've looked into it, but this is based on a real historical event that's recent memory, the war is mine. So that's why it's kind of, there's people alive today who live through it. Mm -hmm. And they're still relatively young. Yeah. So I have a hard time. As someone who likes historical games, this is still That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff says there are a lot of gorgeous ones, so I can't really decide. But the worst has to be roads and boats, etc. It is ridiculous. The art is horrible. The text layout is mind boggling. It's so ugly and ill conceived that I have little faith in the game being any different. And he posts a picture of the cover. And I can't disagree with him. That is, the, the, the art's okay, but that design of the lettering and the way it's written out, it's, yeah. it's. Yeah, it's, it, it's upsetting because, so to describe it for our audio listeners, the word roads and boats are using a lot of the same. So it's literally, there's an R and a B on top with an R on top, uh, like in a, in a column. And then there's an, O, a big O that's the size of both of those letters combined. And then there's an A. And then there's a DT, the D on top of the T, but it's at an angle because of to match the A. And then a big S that matches also the same size as the, the O and o the and a. a. But then there's an ampersand inside of the the O. It, and then don't even get me started on the etc part o, of it. Which means yeah, the etc. starts with another ampersand, which does not help. <laughs> it's not an E. You already have the A in roads and boat. Like it, I think they were trying to be frustrating to read. I really do. But it's. I've heard the game is really good. And so I like uh, mentioning a comment in here. Uh, Sarah says, you mean... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. RBO Good and company. ADTS. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try and... Oh, man, no. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Yep. All right. Uh, Brian, he says, best unearthed or anything by Ryan Lockett. Unearthed, I very strongly considered buying because of the cover alone. Yeah. And she said... All right. He said, not sure I can think of any terrible ones. Well, you haven't been playing a lot of games because there's quite a few out there. At, just right? look above your comments there. <laughs> Kirk says, I think Canvas has the best cover and it's actually designed to be hung on a wall, which I've seen. And the worst is, and I think this is what we were talking about, that really creepy photo, all manner of evil. It's so dark and it's very hard to tell what game it is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Shelly said, I can't help but love Everdell, even though I've never played it. Santa Monica and Takenoko spring to mind, too. I'm really not keen on the Concordia box art or Great Western Trail. I don't disagree with that. Concordia, have you, did you see their discussion? So I'm going to bring up Dice Tower again. Uh, they had the Beautiful on the Inside game, where the favorite games that they, that they liked, yeah, yeah. but the, you wouldn't, like, go Concordia did you see the comparison of the first and second edition? Oh, yeah. Cover? It just got kind of cleaned it up a little bit, but, like, everyone was complaining of that 
design. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll fix it. And then they came out with the same cover. <laughs> cover pretty much of the <laughs> next one. Yeah. All I right, love so that. Rebecca says, depending on what edition of In- Ennis you were looking at, the box art is either gorgeous or terrible. Fair enough. Yeah, Ennis is one of those is one of those very divisive ones. Very, Let's go ahead very and skip divisive. the next one. Yep. Uh, Sarah says, worst, and a picture of Great Western Trail right on the front. But she also says, my favorite off the top of my head is Coloma, which is a very striking cover. So Leslie says, a couple of my favorites are Cosmic Frog, and sends a picture of this, and it's a very colorful cover. Uh, best way to describe this cover is if you're on a substance, this would freak you out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. As well as uh, in Isle of Cats. Um... Yeah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> Mike, I'm just going to skip that one because, uh, nope, not a fan of cats, sorry. Mike, best in my collection, Explorers of the North Sea. I don't know. Like I don't just like, I don't like the any of the art that's in any of the Raiders, Explorers, or anything like that. I just think it's boring. Out of all the covers, that one's probably one of the nicest ones. Yeah, I mean it's nicer than than the others, but it's that's not a par. I don't feel. Fair Either enough. Uh, so this is a first here. Scott says, Great Western Trail. Or Brass Lancashire or by part. Roxley. He specifically said Roxley. And the worst is mm-hmm. Thra? Thra? Yeah. Thra. Yeah. I can't speak French. All right. Antiquity is another one by Splatter. And I'll be talking about a Splatter game in my top four. Ooh. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I like Thra. I haven't played the game, but I like the cover. I don't know. I think it's I think it's stylized. I think it looks neat. I don't think it's like the best cover ever by any sense, but I do like the dark, like medieval motif to it. Maybe that's just me. Chris says, I can't think of a worse off the top of my head, but like others have said, Great Western Trail is so unappealing for how good the game is. One of my favorites I have seen is Cosmic Frog. I have no idea what the game is about, but the box is amazing. Excuse me. And Samantha says one of her favorites is Honey Buzz. And Honey Buzz does have a nice box cover. I haven't played the game, so I can't really make a judgment on how the game plays. But that box cover does draw you in. Yeah. Uh, Scott also said, growing up and watching Western movies in black and white, I don't see all the hate for the original Great Western Trails box. And yeah. Sarah and then, adds uh, the... So Sarah the tried prob- to describe why. Yeah. It, the problem with it is that the black and white oh, is yeah. that the faces are slightly off and designs itself very static and boring, and I cannot disagree with her. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Sarah said Concordia again. Again, that's another one I cannot disagree with. That is just oof. I just never played the game, so I don't want to make a judgment just on the box cover. There's only one, again, on my list that I can do that with, and you'll see why. Steven says there are so many good ones. I'd be ha- uh, I'd be happy at an art gallery of just board game covers. I really like Andrew Bosley's work, such as the tapestry cover, which is really nice. As for the worst covers, I really don't know. If I can find myself to the BGG top one hundred, maybe Food Chain Magnet or El Grande. I really like Food Chain Magnet's cover. I hate the way the components look, but the cover I dig that old nineteen fifties style diner. It's I cool. looked at uh, like the BGG Top 100 to help make this list. El Grande was on my short list, but I'm like, it's an older game. I'm not going to put it here because I don't no. want to get in trouble for what it is. But it's a game that's so good. It deserves a reprint, reprint with great art. Yeah. See, I, I didn't put El Grande on my list for one very, very strong reason. I think my four are way uglier. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> They're, they're... So John said, worst is probably Castles of Burgundy in terms of chasm between artwork and gameplay. And I love what Seventh Continent did in terms of making me want to open the box. 
Seven Continent wasn't too bad. Um, I do I do like that cover. I, sometimes that simple art cover is really nice. And Pam says the worst yeah, cover I, is. I go ahead. Is Masons, and I've never even heard of that game. But is that Rio Grande's? Doesn't look like it. That's a pretty awful cover too. Uh, yeah, but, but that, the also, bottom looks like a Rio Grande game uh, logo. It might be. <laughs> I'll I'll load it up, but no, that's not a Rio Grande game. So, wait, is it? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That's a Rio Grande games logo. That explains a I lot. I stand corrected. <laughs> oh, poor Rio Grande games. But she did reply that her best cover is Ashes, the original. Couldn't agree more. That is an amazing cover. That is a nice cover. Mm-hmm. VA, you're right, up. So, yep. Uh, VA says best uh, Inish second edition, a study in Emerald, first edition, Nova Luna, and pretty much anything that Vincent Tr- Du Trade has done. Worst, yeah, I can't disagree with that. Dominant species because of that font. Yep. Yeah, that font is awful, a dominant species. Oh, well, yeah, no, I don't disagree with you on that. Uh, so jo- Joel says, if not for cover art, I'd have bought Great Western Trail by now. Agreed. Todd, I probably wouldn't have, actually. Tom says, some of the least appealing covers for great games. Haven't played them personally, but I have heard good things. Concordia, Great Western Trail, and Santa Maria. So... So many great ones. Everdell, Predaporter. I'm assuming the second one for Predaporter. Uh, Rico- yeah, probably. Coco, Parks, Mimbra, and anything in the micro artwork. Or in the Miko artwork, sorry. I actually just got a copy of Coimbra not too long ago. Really need to try that one. It does have a pretty cover. Good luck on the colors. Good luck on the colors. Yeah, I looked into it. It Yeah, the colors are... Eh. Uh, Aaron yeah. says, favorite cover for him is Apocalypse Road, which is a GMT game that I know nothing about, but that's a nice cover. I'll be honest, I couldn't have, I didn't, I couldn't read the title. That font is <laughs> crazy. Um, and then Greg says, I'm partially, I'm partial to the old SPI white box era, which is just a red star, white star. And it's just a plain white box with a red banner across the top of it. I don't know if it's a war game or I what, have no that's interesting. Clue. Greg also put, I like yeah. any cover with artwork by Roger Roger B. McGowan, with my favorite being the classic GDW title designed by Frank Chadwick. That's actually a decent cover yeah, if you that, think about it. It looks like a black and white picture. Yeah, it's it's pretty neat. He also added one of my least favorites. Great game with attractive, classic graphics inside, but a pathetically bad cover. New York, 1901. I don't know. I kind of like that one. The cover's nice. I haven't heard good things about the game itself, but uh, he also added perhaps I'm his huge... favorite. Go ahead. Oh, I said I'm not a big fan of the game. It's okay. Uh, perhaps my favorite SPI cover is Atlantic Wall, The Invasion of Europe, June 1944. That's a mouthful. Right? It's not a bad looking Jordan cover. says, no, the uh, very metropolis, like old, uh, like the old German, like silent films, like the ones that were just super surreal and creepy. Yeah. I like that. Um, Jordan says, one of the infamous, one is, this one is infamous in wargaming circles. The game itself is a serious war game on the Sicily campaign of WW2. And the cover, on the other hand, looks like something from a high schooler's doodle pad. That's Operation Husky. Does look like a high schooler's doodle pad. <laughs> right, it really does. All right, so Brian says, Unearth was the first board game he's ever purchased based solely on the cover art. Worked out as well as he loves the game. And that is such yep. a nice cover. And Jordan says, Let, and let's not forget, World in Flames. The game is a classic, but the box bears an unfortunate resemblance to something that is, that isn't usually associated with WWE. 
you want to look at that cover, check it out on Board Game. Yeah. Let's just say, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lucas yep. says, best one, escape the aliens in outer space. Worst one, every generic fantasy cover. I almost sure? bought Escape the Aliens in Outer Space this last weekend at Barnes & Noble based on that cover alone. It, it is a nice did. cover. Uh, Aram says Concordia is ugly very specifically but the game is marvelous. In... Let's skip that one. Neil says, Tricarion Collector's Edition looks pretty sweet. Also, Island of El Dorado, a simple black box with a magnetic lid, gold lettering, and inside of the box, some sweet art. And then uh, Troy says, it's probably cheating to go back in time before modern board games to find ugly covers, but this is easily the most horrendous one in my collection. And it's called Save the President, and it looks like the majority of the cover is covered with font just like a brick of words an excel spreadsheet at this point yeah it's Ooh, it's, it's ugly it's yeah, yeah. Go check that out. yeah so you we'll can look at our post here on the board game revolution facebook there a lot of the covers are on there so go check it out if you can absolutely so daniel how do you want to do this do you want to talk about some of the honorable mentions uh, of like some of the good and bad ones first or do you want to just go into our list and then talk about honorable mentions after uh, let's talk about our short list after we go into our list. Let's let's talk about our our eight games that we want to talk about. Okay, how do you want to start? Do you want to go vice versa? I'm assuming we're going to go from four to number one. Yes, let's go with worst okay. first and best uh, last. And on a high note, I completely agree. All right, All right. I have the coin, the coin of doom. doom. Let's find out. Who goes? Start it off, Daniel. All right. 